Hi guys, this is Amber D and welcome to the first of many tutorials from myself, Amber D. Um, I'm going to get straight in with the first question which is from a friend of mine called Sherry, DJ Deck Teaser. Shout out to Deck Teaser. Uh, she says, this is going to sound ridiculous. I have a load of patterns and I'm just playing them in sequence because I don't know how to lay the track out. I'm pleased with what I've done though. Now, I did start to do a tutorial earlier, but I forgot to press record. So here it is. This is what I've done so far. So for me, um, basically, if I just get all this over here and I'll walk you through my process. So if I had f a few loops that I was really, really happy with, I've got a couple of loops out of here earlier and they're like this. I think I'm going to clip it that as well. There's a bit of a couple of loops that you're quite, quite uh, happy with, or probably even more. Um, let's see if I've got any more in here that I've got. Mm, that one did my head in after a bit sometimes that happens as well ladies and gentlemen uh, sometimes you'll get you think you've got a good idea going um, and if you do get yourself stuck into one of these roots or these loops um, and it is starting to do your head in then you probably it's probably for the best really because you'll probably find that you know later on that you'd have just sacked it off anyway that the, the um, the loops that you were using so if you can stand it for a long amount of time over a long period of time and you still like it you're probably onto a good thing so getting stuck in a loop isn't necessarily always a bad thing now of course as you'll be able to see i'm using fl studio but a lot of the things that i'm going to be talking about here are going to be relevant to most digital audio workstations but uh, there are other ways of doing things. Obviously, this is just the way that I do things. I'm still learning and my workflow is always um, getting changed up and, you know, I'm doing things in different ways. So this is just basically to show you how I would do something given the uh, problem which has been expressed in this particular tutorial um, about getting lost in the groove. So for me, if I, for example... I'm quite happy with those uh, those two loops there. What I would start to do now is think about um, arranging it by, first of all, I'd find myself a track that I quite liked anyway. So what I usually do is I get myself a reference track. So any track that I usually like the, the, the sound of and I time stretch it so it's the same tempo as the project as well. And make sure I align the ticks with the first beat of the bar, the first kick of the uh, reference track that I put in here. So, and then what I begin to do, if you see along the top here, I've got these little, little markers. In FL, you just go to time markers, add one, and then when you've added one, you just type it in the name of it and they'll come up along the top here. So, for example, I've got intro, loop two in, pre-break, bass in, breakdown, drop, and, of course, the end of the track. So, then what you'd start to do, as I have started to prepare earlier over here, I've started to get in all of my key elements. So I've got my kick and loop one and loop two. And I've started to arrange them in just how I can hear uh, loops um, being introduced on the, uh, the reference track that I have here. So, so on here, you've got a, an offbeat clap that comes in. So. So that's where they brought in their second uh, loop. So this is what I decided to do here. I decided to copy it. Um, 
So that's loop one. And then Obviously the pitch there as well. So you know it's starting to give me a bit of a basis to work on really and to see uh, where I'm going to be eventually going with this truck. So um, uh, then you've got the bass in there. The pre-breakdown obviously this is where you wouldn't have the kick so I've taken out my kicks there as so. Breakdown obviously no kicks in there and I've copied and pasted it and as you can see there's these little breaks here where I've taken out one of the kicks. This is going to be uh, on the reference track where uh, you'd have what's called a fill. So you could take out one kick at the end or you could take out a few. It's completely up to you. I've just taken out one for the time's sake at the moment. Um, so yeah, so at the moment this is how it's sounding. a little bit loose these loops at the moment but they could do with a bit of tightening up but they you know they'll do for now so the next thing that i would do is i would start to get in my effects and um, effects consist of your cymbal crashes uh anyone who's a, a dj will know that these go on the first beat of the bar and they help you to know when you're going to be mixing in your um or setting up your mixes from when you're djing so that's where this crash would be. Um, I have placed them all 32 bars apart from each other, I believe, which works out quite nicely. So it's not too often, it's not too little. So as you can see, each crash seems to be happening when something is happening along my reference uh, notes along the top, um, which makes sense, really. Um, so that's usually a good way of recognising quickly the patterns um, so it doesn't seem to be quite so scary when you start to arrange things. It can be at first but once you get used to it and you can see the same sort of patterns emerging it's sort of like at the, be the beginning will be the sim similar to the end. So as you can see here we start with the kick and loop one and then we bring in loop two here. So what I've done for here is I've uh, reversed that so I've taken out loop two here at 64 bars to the end and kept in loop one all the way to the end. If I had another loop, loop three, I would probably uh, make this longer and have loop three coming in and out or intermittently or that could probably be a loop for your um, your rides, the hi-hat, something like that depending if you're making some sort of hard techno track or if you're going, uh, you know, whatever style really is, um, whatever you feel it it, uh, it needs. So yes, yeah, so your effects are going to be really helpful for you to start to hear the track as a full finished product without overdoing it with the loops, without overdoing it with um, synths, with the VSTs and then losing what was um, probably fundamentally a really good idea in the first place. So here, what I've done here is I've got a couple of FX loops. Now these are good for adding atmosphere. So for here, I liked them in this pre-breakdown here, which is a like mini breakdown before the main one. Quite so if we put all this together, this will sound a bit like... can see there where on the reference track we would probably have in this bit here where we start to get that gap start to get something in that little area which is called the fill which is going to start uh, adding interest and defining the uh, the the different areas to the track um, and creating yeah like I say the interest there really um, so 
the next thing here is I've got in the effects category is a rise, a sweep, sorry, a long sweep. Now this is going to be starting to build up energy uh, leading towards um, a big um, change in the chart or something in the range but that's significant. So in this instance, the very first sweep up will be just before the base kicks in. So this is to introduce um, that something's about to happen. So obviously we get used to the fact that something's going to be happen. It makes us prepare for something and it makes the track um, just f seem nicer to our ears. So if we listen to that. Um, I've also put in a couple of uh, fills. I've just found a couple of fills in a sample pack. A little bit like the one that we've got here in the uh, Murder is the Base remix. The ones in the Murder is the Base remix. It was the fills, if you're not too sure, these go at the end of a... Um, uh, at the end of um, a section of bars, usually around about 32 bars, but not limited to 32 bars. Could be every 16, could be every eight. It depends on the style of music, it depends on what you want to do. At the end of the day, be creative. It's up to you. There aren't any rules. So in the instance of this, in the last four bars leading up to loop two coming in, the fill is introduced as such. We're looking for there so it's a one bar fill so uh, in our tune it's going to sound a bit like and I'm also by the way I'm just going to cut out a couple of bits and pieces here to give the fill a bit more chance and room to breathe and to be heard and to give it a bit more energy really by doing that a um, bit too much going on makes it a bit too wishy-washy so here we go <laughs> So you could use so many different fills. It's sometimes good to use one or two that's similar, but maybe just make a, a, a change to the, to, I don't know, you could put like a fill to sweep on it, you know, anything like that. Uh, it's up to you really. But um, um, yeah, the main thing I would say is if wherever you're going to be putting a fill, I would drop out some of the other percussion as well so you get to hear it properly. So, and the other thing is oh what's this over here oh that's my sweep so yes those are my top tips really for beginning to get the feel of a finished track if you're feeling you're getting stuck in a loop and that is to start arranging a track by getting your favorite uh favorite track of yours in the same sort of style and then making the notes along the top of the playlist as to where things are coming in um, that you're um, that you uh, can define as being certain moments in the track where something um, significant happens so for example the intro obviously and the ending um, where the second loop is introduced uh, where a pre breakdown is where the bass obviously comes in where the breakdown starts and where the breakdown finishes um, make up your own ones, whatever it is that's significant to your um, chosen genre. And then this way, by putting your effects in first or af soon after you've um, put in your loops, you are going to begin to feel like you've got a finished product there. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Bye. See you next time.